Hey guys, it's Paul from Online Sax Academy. In today's lesson, we've got a great workout that's gonna really help you play in tune on the saxophone. Now the top three things to make almost anything you do on the saxophone sound good is if you play in time, you play with a good tone, and you play in tune. Now you can have a great big tone on the sax, but when you go to play with other people or backing tracks, if you're not playing in tune, it's gonna make everything you play sound a bit off. So I wanted to create a workout that you could use, and I use myself, to really hone in on playing playing in tune on the sax. Now these days there are lots of apps that you can use that will tell you how in tune you are. Now using the chromatic tuner is a really useful tool in the beginning, but you also want to develop and cultivate your ears as well so that you can tell by listening, am I sharp or flat, am I blending with the music around me? There's a phenomenon called beating, which is where if the notes aren't quite matching, if you're slightly sharp or flat, you'll hear this kind of interference between the two notes. So this workout is all about listening. It starts with a pure sine wave tone, which I want you to focus in on. And then after four beats, you're gonna join in with your notes. Then you're gonna hear a chord slowly swell from underneath you. And your job is to really listen and blend your sound with that chord and the sine wave. Now, after you've held that note, you're then gonna go an octave higher. The reason why we're jumping an octave is it's quite an easy note to imagine in your mind. If you think of the first two notes of Somewhere Over the Rainbow, the sum and where are an octave apart. So try to imagine that note in your mind before you start to play it. Also, keep your embouchure steady and don't tighten up and start biting down on the reed when you go to the higher notes. You may have found if you've used a tuner in the past that often saxophones have a tendency to go sharp in the upper register and go flat in the lower register. Now this is due partly just to the physics of the saxophone and the fact that it's a conical shape. But it's also a really common bad habit with more beginner players where they'll tend to bite down to try and get the high notes out or they'll really slacken off their jaw to get the low notes out. What you want to aim for is a generally neutral embouchure where you have a similar amount of pressure across the ranges. You can then use your voicing, your tongue and your throat to adjust the tuning of a note. So if you notice that the note is coming out too high, you can relax and open your throat and that will help lower that pitch. Your tongue position does help as well. If you think about when you whistle and feel what your tongue is doing as you change the pitch, you can do a similar thing when you're blowing the saxophone and that will also have an effect on the pitch. Now, along with the overall tendency of notes to go sharp at the top and flat at the bottom, there are some common other tendencies as well that saxophones have, and every saxophone is slightly different as well, so it's a good opportunity to get to know what your sax does. But some really common ones are that low D is very flat, whereas middle D, D with your octave key on, E flat and the E as well, those three notes there in the middle, they tend to be way sharper than other surrounding notes nearby. Now it's a good idea to warm up before you try this exercise. When you first grab your sax and the metal's cold, you'll, that will have a real effect on the pitch of the notes and you'll find they come out a bit flatter. And of course, it's always a good idea to get your saxophone mostly in tune by adjusting the mouthpiece on the crook, this, of course, only gets you roughly there, and everything else is done by your voicing. Now, the other reason why it's good to use this more as a listening exercise and really let your ear be your guide as to whether you're blending or not, is that when you're in other musical situations, say you're playing with a band and the trumpet player's a little bit sharp, you can match their tuning in the performance so that the overall performance sounds much better rather than you dogmatically staying on the correct pitch, but it actually sounds worse because you're getting that beating effect. Now in this workout, we start on the note F for alto saxophones and we go up to the note B for alto saxophones. So we have seven different note names, each with their octave higher pairing. And you can get the PDF to print out of this workout along with the backing track to download for free at onlinetaxacademy.com. Now, if you're a tenor saxophone player, you'll need the tenor saxophone backing track, which is also available to download for free at onlinesaxacademy.com. Now, premium members at Online Sax Academy can also get the other two parts of this workout. And with those three parts, you cover every note on the sax. Okay, so here's this tuning workout.
Now, if you're new to this kind of thing, don't worry if you see that tuner moving quite a lot. It takes a while to educate your embouchure and your voicing into what they need to do. But if you're consistent with this, you'll find that you automatically adopt the correct voicing to form each of the pitches on the sax. Now, it can seem a bit of a curse at first to have an instrument that seems to so easily play out of tune. But all that flexibility, once you learn how to control it, is what makes the saxophone so expressive and one of the instruments closest to the human voice. Now, remember, you can get the free PDF and backing track for this workout and tenor sax players, you've got the transpose version that you can download. And of course, premium members, you've got the other two workouts you can download and work through as well if you want to work on that lower third of your sax or the top third.